Welcome back, everybody. We've got another episode of Your Mail. I'm bloody chuffed. Feels pretty heavy. Let's see what's inside. So this box is another one sent by Brian. He sent me a bunch of cool stuff last time, including a complete in box Atari 2600 game, which was super cool, with a bunch of other stuff, Game of Year games, NES games. It was awesome. This time, I'm not exactly sure what's inside of it, but he did mention some M Network Atari games, and I think NES games, we'll see. Feels like there's a good bit in there, so gosh, I'm super excited. And Brian is Coop8182 on Instagram. I recommend everyone go follow him there because he posts a lot of awesome, cool stuff. Stuff that I'm pretty sure if you're a fan of my content, you'll be a fan of his content. Such as, for instance, he has a Neil Breen pillow on here that I guess he got from Etsy. But how freaking awesomely cool is that? If, you, if you're not familiar with Neil Breen, I highly recommend you go down that rabbit hole. And there is also some Toxie Love. I'm a huge, huge Troma fan, so this makes me very happy. As a matter of fact, the next top 10 most expensive games I think I'm going to be doing is Game Boy. And that's because the Toxic Avenger game for Game Boy is included in that, and I'm super excited. So everyone, make sure you go follow Brian on Instagram, Coop8182. Awesome guy. Thank you for the stuff, Brian. I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to see what we got. So we'll try to do this blind. Because that's just kind of what I've gotten in the habit of doing. And I think that makes the videos more fun. Hopefully. You guys must like these unboxing videos, because they usually do fairly well. I need to figure out this table situation. I keep saying that, but I haven't done anything to fix it. <laughs> let's, 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 let's get our old prickly paws in there. Um, ooh. So we have some safety. We got the mini packer from Pregus. Not Air Defender lights, but they seem to have done their job. And then we got a nice long strip of boobly wrap. Very cool. All right, let's. Mm, I definitely feel some M Network games. All right, I'm just gonna grab one. So we got an M Network game. Not 100% sure which way the text is up. So we will figure this out together. First up, we got. I cannot read that whatsoever. So let's see, we got, <gasps> no freaking way, no freaking way. I know this isn't the best version of this game, <laughs> but I'm a huge Burger Time fan. I uh, do not own this yet. I know I don't own this yet. I am super excited. I have played a good little bit of the Atari 2600 Burger Time, and in my opinion, it is not the worst version of Burger Time. Um, I like it, and I'm super happy to have it, so. So first up, we got Burger Time. Super sweet and I'm super excited. Awesome start. All right, let's see if I can get, I'm gonna try to get all these M Network games. It's super cool, it's a bunch of them. Good God, thank you, Brian. You're awesome. So next up, we got Armor Ambush. Um, I don't, I don't have this game. I don't really know anything about it. So, uh, let me know. How is Armor Ambush? I'm super excited. Dear God, I'm super excited. Armor Ambush, second game. Next, another Emma Network game. We got... Air Raiders? Air Raiders, right? Air Raiders. It says Singapore on it. That's... This label is definitely different than the other M Network games I have. And it says, copyright Singapore. Do they all say that? No, this says Korea. This says Singapore, okay. Just a very different label. Never seen one quite like that. So we got Air Raiders. Ok, 
Okay, another M Network game. We got, oh, it's another light label. Tron Deadly Discs. I don't know that I've ever played the Tron games. I think I've heard good things about them. I am not positive. That is what that says, right? I can't really read it. <laughs> yeah, Tron Deadly Discs, 1982, Disney and uh, Singapore. Very sweet. I'm excited to check this out. We got Tron Deadly Discs. I can't believe he sent me so much stuff. I'm so excited. All right, next up we got... That Super Challenge Baseball? Super Challenge Baseball. So I do already own this one. I'll have to compare conditions, but uh, very cool. Maybe I could use some of these duplicates I have uh, for display pieces. So Super Challenge Baseball, very cool. All right, another M Network game we got. I can get that to focus. Doesn't matter, I still can't read it. That armor, armor ambush? Wait a second. Armor ambush? It's a different, it's a different, like it's a variant of this armor ambush. It's got a different labels. It seems like M Network had a bunch of different labels that they used. Um, but cool, awesome. <laughs> Two versions of Armor Ambush. Uh, I, I want to say I don't know what this is, but maybe I do. I'm excited to try it out and see, though. All right, next up, another M, M Network game we got. Soccer? International Soccer. Cool. Um... I'm not really a big soccer guy, but I do enjoy some 8-bit soccer, so cool to get international soccer. All right, got another M Network game. Very cool. wonder how many games they published. We got Lock and Chase. Lock and Chase is a great game. Very cool. All right, next up, M Network, we got. Dark Cavern? Dark Cavern. I know I don't have this one. I don't remember a lot about it, but I'm excited to check it out. Dark Cavern. Next game, we got... I'm never going to be able to read that. Adventures of Tron. I don't know which one came first. I want to say this one, but I'm not positive. But we got another Tron game. Super excited to check it out. Got Adventures of Tron. All right, next game, we got... Bump and Jump? Is that Bump and Jump? We got Bump and Jump. I'm super excited about that. That's another great game. I'm not as familiar with the uh, 2600 version, but I do love this game. So I'm super stoked to uh, own it and, and get to play it. This is awesome. Bump and jump for the 2600. All right, next game, another M Network we got. Astro Blast, very cool. I already own this, but I will tell you right now, I can tell without a, without a doubt, this label is much nicer than the one that I have. I like Astro Blast a lot. I really need to try the original Astro Smash on the television. I haven't had a chance to play it, but I do enjoy this, and I understand that the uh, version on the television is is better. Uh, but this is a very cool, awesome game. Excited to have this nice, pretty label here. We got Astro Blast, and from what I can feel here, this seems to be the last. I think it's the last M Network game, but I'm not 100% sure. So up next, we got. Frogs and Flies! Very cool! I was just watching... 
I want to say it was drink in games with Josh. I want to say that I just saw him talking about this. I could be wrong. But it's a cool game. Very happy to have it. One I do not have yet. So we got Frogs and Flies for the 2600. So even though it has cooled down significantly outside, it is quickly getting hot in here with the lights and everything. So you're probably going to see me progressively get more moist during the course of the video. Say la vie. <laughs> All right, so there's there's definitely let me pull this up here. There's definitely NES in here, but I, I think there's more Atari. Yes, there's more Atari. I thought I had felt in a Magic game. Yes, let's do this the Magic game. Love a Magic, one of my favorite uh, companies that published for the Atari. I can't remember which way's up for for these cartridges, but we'll just flip it up and see what happens. So we got, of course, it's upside down. We got Cosmic Arc, one of my all-time favorite games for the 2600. Uh, this game was featured in my very first Atari games that are still fun to play videos. I still come back to this often. I love this game. If you haven't played it and you love uh, Atari games, you gotta check out Cosmic Arc. Actually, it's actually the sequel to Atlantis, which I believe he sent me last time. So very cool. We got Cosmic Arc for the 2600. We're just gonna grab whatever we get. So up next, we got Haunted House, a veritable classic. This was featured in my Second episode of Atari games that are still fun to play. Um, a classic, one of my all-time favorite Atari games. Uh, definitely be playing this one around Halloween, which is coming up soon. So, awesome. We got Haunted House. All right, next up, another Atari. We got... Fishing Derby by Activision. Ooh. I think I've played this but I'm not sure. I know I don't own it. It's an Activision title, so I'm excited to look into that. Sometime in the nearest future, I'm going to do my Atari or my Activision games for Atari ranking. Um, that was just going to take a lot of time for me to research and play all the games thoroughly, but I'm super excited. Let me know what you guys think of Fishing Derby. Is it a good Activision title? Let me know. We got Fishing Derby which does not have the worst active plaque that I've ever seen. It's not bad. All right, another Tari. We got... Crawl? I didn't know that there was a Crawl game for the Atari 2600. I don't think I know anything about this game. I, it's been years since I've seen this film. You guys gotta let me know. How is Crawl for the 2600? How does that translate? I don't even, I'm not even sure what kind of game it would be. <laughs> I'm very excited to check this out. We got Crawl for the 2600. Ooh, this is a weird shaped cartridge. I'm not sure who, but I, it's a weird, I don't know that I have any other cartridges shaped like this. So I'm very excited to see what this is. We got, Sea animals. I don't know what that is. We got. Name this game from US Games? I don't know what name this game is. It says six game variations. I have never heard of this in my entire life. I I am super curious. What the heck is named this game? I'm gonna have to Google this real quick. That's, what is this? I'm gonna go to Wikipedia real quick here. This game was conceived by Rob Dubrin in February 1982. He offered it to Parker Brothers, who owned the video game license for Jaws at the time. 
After Parker Brothers lost the license, the game was shown to Jim Wickstead of James Wickstead Design Associates, who programmed it from August to October 82. Originally developed as Treasures of the Deep, the game was picked up by U.S. Games as Guardians of Treasure. U.S. Games decided to create a contest around the game, releasing it as Name This Game and Win $10,000, with a cash prize to be awarded to the winning name after April 30th, 1983. <laughs> However, before the contest was completed, U.S. Games ceased operation. Uh, it was released in Europe as Octopus. Huh. I have never heard of this. This is awesome. <laughs> flipping. <laughs> this is flipping awesome. It's just such a weird shaped cartridge. Like, it's got this, this ridge here. Um... Very cool. So up next, we got name this game and win $10,000 apparently the whole name. Very cool. Very cool. I just learned something. <laughs> All right, we've got another Atari. We got Towering Inferno. It's actually a pretty sweet game. I've played some of this. I need to play it some more. I haven't given a proper amount of time, but I did enjoy my time with this. Very cool. Um, another U.S. Games game. We got Towering Inferno. All right. Next up, another Atari. We got... Ooh, that's a neat label. What is... <gasps> no freaking way! Dude, Brian. No freaking way. <sighs> Did you watch my, um, Apollo ranking video? Uh, this is cool. A lot of history with this game. This is a skeet shoe, right? Yeah. Skeet shoe is not a good game. <laughs> it is very much not good. If I remember the story correctly, um, this game was programmed by Ed Salvo in his spare time, like independently, like he taught himself how to program for the 2600 and eventually somehow got in contact with uh, Apollo Games and this was the first game that they released. Like I said, it's not a good game, but it's got a lot of cool history and I'm super excited to have like, I'm really, really excited to have this. I just, uh, in the last couple months, ranked all of the uh, Apollo games. And even, like, again, even though this isn't a good game, there's a lot of cool history with it, and I'm super happy to have it. Awesome. We got Skeet Shoot. Games by Apollo. And if I'm feeling correctly, which I might not be... Oh, wait, no, never mind. I think we have two more. Two more Atari games. So up next, we got... Jungle Hunt! Very cool! It's another classic I don't have. Awesome! Awesome! This is another one that I've been on the lookout for anyway. It's one of those just iconic titles that uh, I feel like is obligatory in a 2600 collection. So we got Jungle Hunt for the 2600. My little fingers are telling me the truth. I think we have one more Atari see what the last one is we got what is that I don't know what that is we got coconuts this label is freaking amazing <laughs> but we got coconuts another game I am not familiar with I mean, no. What do you guys think of Coconuts? I love this label. I'm not familiar with this company, Telesis. It was made in Mexico. Very cool. I'm super excited. I always get excited when I get stuff like this. Like, things I've never, I've never seen and never heard of. I'm, like, super duper excited for several of these games. <laughs> so, we got Coconuts for the 2600. Okay, so from what I can feel, it seems like the rest is NES. Super stoked. Let's go ahead and dive into the first one. We got... Blades of Steel? Blades of Steel! So, not really into the sports ball games. Um, guess this one isn't a sports ball game, huh? There's no ball, right? Yeah. Um, but as far as sports games goes, um, I do enjoy hockey more than a lot of the others. 
I understand and can wrap my head around hockey a little bit more. I don't have this one. I know this is a title I always hear bandied around for some of the best sports games on the NES, so I'm super excited to finally get a chance to check out Blades of Steel. Very nice. All right, next NES game we got. Hydlide? Hydlide. Cool. I've never played Hydlide. My only familiarity with Hydlide is the angry video game nerd. <laughs> now, I have heard some people defend this game, uh, people that actually do enjoy it. If I remember correctly, and I could be wrong because I, I don't think I've ever played it myself, there's something about uh, choppy scrolling in this game. Um, I seem to remember that being a thing, but I don't even remember where I'm getting that from. But that's my recollection. It's something weird about how the graphics scroll. But I'm super excited to try it. I've never played it. And like I said, I have heard defenders of this game and who say it's not as bad as its reputation. So next up, we got Hydlide. All right. Next NES game, we got... Ooh, Spot. Spot the video game. Very cool. I was looking at this recently and I actually was just playing this. This is um, like a puzzle game where you've got to change the colors of the pieces. I actually had a lot of fun with this. I, I had never seen it or played it growing up. And I really only just discovered it recently. I was playing it in uh, Nestopia. So I'm super excited to have this. We got Spot. What was it called? Oh, just Spot the Video Game. Cool. All right. So it feels like we have two more games. I think they're NES games in those cool plastic cases. Super excited. I have no idea which way is up. So let's just go for it. We got that right yeah Ooh, we got Tecmo Bowl um again I'm not a big sports ball guy but I've never played Tecmo Bowl and I believe this is in the upper echelon of uh, football games on the NES right um, so I'm going to have to give this a, a try and see if I can get into it. I would like to try to learn football games at some point. <laughs> it's just something I haven't dedicated any time to, but I, I know that I've heard Tecmo Bowl is like El Supremo. So super cool. Excited to finally try out Tecmo Bowl. Okay, I believe this is it. Pretty excited to see what our last game is. Thank you so much, Brian. This has been amazing. Last NES game we got... I cannot read that at all through this case. Looks like a cat. Oh, no way. Oh, wow. Super cool. Oh, my God. I used to love this movie when I was a kid. I don't know that I've ever really played the NES game, but I've heard it's actually really good. It's a Capcom game. <laughs> I've heard it's really good. We got Little Nemo the Dream Master. Used to love this movie when I was a kid. I used to watch it fairly often. Um, very cool. Oh, my God. I've watched somebody review this recently, but I can't remember who it is. But I've heard a lot of praise for this game, and I'm super excited to finally try it out. I am super duper excited. That is an awesome way to end the box. Awesome. We got Little Nemo the Dream Master. So there we go. Another episode of Viewer Mail. I can't believe how awesome my viewers are. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I promise that this stuff is going to turn into a bunch of awesome content for you. So look forward to that. In my last <laughs> viewer mail, I chose like some best of the boxes and it's, I, that's a, more of a too many boxes thing, but it's kind of just become habit for me. So I guess if I had to choose like my favorite thing from the box, that's actually really hard. So it's going to be four things. If I had to, if I had to gun to my head, choose my favorite things from this box of very generously donated items from Brian. Uh, coconuts, because I love this art and I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Ski Shoe, even though it's a really bad game, it's got a lot of cool history and uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for Apollo games. 
So I am super thrilled to have finally have this in my collection. Name this game? I had never even heard of this. It's got a cool backstory. I'm curious to see what it actually plays like and if it's a good game, I have no idea. It's got this really weird cartridge. Uh, super excited about that. Super glad to have this. And then uh, Little Nemo, the Dream Master. Like I said, I've heard people say a lot of really positive things about this. I used to love the movie when I was a kid. So I'm super excited to finally have this and to check it out. So super awesome, man. So there we go, another episode of Viewer Mail. Thank you, Brian, again. Everyone, I, I will remind you, go follow Coop8182 on Instagram. He's got a bunch of cool stuff. And again, if you're into my content, there's no doubt to me that you would be into his. Let me know what you guys think of the contents of the box. Let me know, did you have a favorite item in the box? Uh, and honestly, those four... Uh, I know that seems like a lot, but at the same time, there are several other games, like Burger Time, that I'm super excited about. Um, there's a, several other things. I'm excited for everything in that box, and I cannot believe how awesome... <laughs> I just can't believe how awesome it was. So again, I probably said a thousand times. Thank you, Brian. And I want to thank all you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I've got a lot of big plans for the channel, a lot of new content coming soon. My upload schedule has been kind of spotty at best lately just because there's a lot going on in my life, but I'm working on getting content out more consistently and raising the production value of the content that comes out. So look forward to some big, wonderful things coming to the channel very soon. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day, and I will see you next time. Bye. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to our channel members. Thank you guys. You're awesome. I appreciate the support. Big shout out and thank you to Sad Vlad, Retro Cart Collector, and Bread and Circuses. You guys are the bomb. If you would like special perks such as being shouted out at the end of videos, please check that join button down below.